Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be another Hackintosh video, but this time it's going to be on the laptop. Now with all the Hackintoshes I've built, I've had varying degrees of success on laptops, and this one by far is the most successful build I've ever done, and it's using the HP EliteBook 840 G5, so in my opinion, this is the best laptop for making into a Hackintosh. Now this is not a tutorial video, but later in the video I will walk through the BIOS screens, show you the KEXTs I use, and walk through my Clover configurator screen so you can see what settings I have in there. Now with that out of the way, let's jump in and talk a little bit about the specs of this machine. So the specs on the EliteBook 840G5 that I'm using in this video are an 8th generation i5 processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and a 256 gigabyte M.2 drive. Now these machines are really nice because they have a whole bunch of ports and most of them work on the Hackintosh. It's got two USB 3.1 ports, an HDMI port, an RJ45 gigabit Ethernet port, 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone and mic jack, and it has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. Now that is the one piece that I had to swap out for this build is I had to swap out that Wi-Fi card. It's super easy to do. You just take the screws off the back, pop the old card out, pop the new card in, and I'll have a link down in the description to the exact card that I use that works perfectly Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, I get uh, 802.11 AC speeds, works great. Now the only other port on the machine is a Thunderbolt port. I have not gotten this to work in the Hackintosh, and from what I've read online, it's not something that we're gonna get to work. So that's the only port on the machine that does not work in this build. Now the only other pieces of hardware that don't work besides that Thunderbolt port are the Wi-Fi card that comes with the laptop. Now, like I said, that's super easy to swap out. Again, I'll have that link down in the description to the card that I used, and once you swap it out, works perfectly. The camera does not work. I've not found a way to get that to work at all. And the trackpad works, but it's real finicky. It doesn't register some of the clicks, the left and the right clicks. Sometimes you have to click it twice to get it to register once. Now you can improve that a little bit by turning on the tap to click settings in Mac OS. That does help that performance a little bit, but it's still a little kludgy when you have to do a click to drag or something like that. If anybody knows how to fix that, please leave some suggestions down in the comment section below so other people People can learn from that. For me, I use the mouse a lot, uh, even when I'm using a laptop, so it hasn't been that big a deal for me. As far as the performance of the machine, everything works super smoothly. The operating system is very fast and responsive. I've been able to do updates and it hasn't broken the machine. The applications launch and they run really smoothly. Even things like iMessage and uh, Handoff and AirDrop, AirPlay, those things all work once you replace that Wi-Fi card. Bluetooth has been solid. I haven't dropped any connections. Everything's been really solid. And I was even really surprised that this machine performs so well in something like video editing. In Final Cut Pro, I'm able to edit 4K video. Absolutely no problem. It's very smooth. Even with transitions and stuff, it's smooth. And this machine doesn't have a dedicated GPU. It only has that internal GPU. So this next part, I was really surprised because DaVinci Resolve actually works really, really well on this too. Now DaVinci Resolve is dependent on a uh, GPU, typically works best with a dedicated GPU. And in fairly simple timelines, either 10, 1080p or 4K with a pretty basic timeline, it performed really well. If you're doing anything like uh, tracking and fusion or complex color correction or things like that, it's gonna start to bog down at 4K. In 1080p, you're still okay, but I was really, really surprised at how well this machine performs. It's probably one of the best performing Hackintoshes I've ever built. Now, I don't put a lot of stock into synthetic benchmarks. I like to base my decisions based on the actual performance, not some benchmarking tool, but I know a lot of people like those, so I ran some benchmarks on this machine. In Cinebench, this machine gets a 1268. In Geekbench, it gets 4,614 single core and 16,266 for multi-core. And in Unigen Heaven, that tests just the graphics, it gets 13.9 frames per second at 1080p medium setting. I'm not all that surprised by that because again, it's just using that uh, internal GPU that's built into the processor. It doesn't have a dedicated GPU. So graphics performance, gaming performance on this is not gonna be great. Things like RimWorld or Oxygen not included, more basic games like that are gonna work fine, but anything that's more graphically intensive are not gonna work well, and that's just because of the integrated GPU. It's not a fault of the build or Mac OS or anything else. 
strictly that GPU is not very powerful when you're talking about gaming. All right, so here's the part a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm just gonna walk through some of the BIOS screens here. I'm not gonna talk about the changes I made, so if you wanna pause along the way here and compare them to your machine, go ahead and do that. These are the settings that work for me for this Hackintosh build. Now that we're through some of those BIOS screens, I'm gonna show you the KEXTs. These are all in the EFI partition in the, the Clover uh, folder structure there. They're not installed locally on the machine, so you can go in and change these at any time. And now let's jump into some of those Clover settings. Again, I'm just gonna go through some of the screens here, show you what they look like so you can make note for any of the settings that you need to change on your machine. Some of these are gonna be blocked out for obvious reasons, but uh, you can see for the most part the settings that I've used. Honestly, I did not have to change a whole lot of things in here. This is a lot of uh, default things that are typically set up in Clover that I was just able to use and then do a little tweaks here and there to make the perf uh, machine perform a little bit better. So if you're looking at making a Hackintosh laptop or a Hackbook, the EliteBook 840G5 is definitely a good machine to consider. Again, this is the most successful laptop build I've ever had on a machine. Just swap out that Wi-Fi card and you are golden. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comment section below. Also, come see me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I love meeting new people on those platforms as well and chatting with them. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.